morning. Hi, everybody. It is the 17th of Tamas, Shiv Asar Batamas. It's a fast day. Beginning of the three weeks of mourning um, over the destruction of the temple. And I'm fasting, and it's the, almost the end of the fast. It's a couple more hours, so if I sound a little groggy or if I miss a word here and there, you'll know why. Okay, so I think everyone outside of Israel has caught up with us. We're up to Parsha Pinchas, all of us. Um, Pinchas is um, a bit of a, a heavy Parsha. It's the aftermath of what happens when the Jewish people stray um, from Hashem in that they're worshiping idols and they're having illicit, immoral relations with Midianite women who are seducing them as a result of Bilam's plan. Um, Bilam, really, in last week's Parsha, tried to create this disconnection between God and the Jewish people. He tried to curse the Jewish people. It didn't quite work out. So instead, he devised this plan where the Midianite women went out and seduced the Jewish men. And um, it turned out that the Jewish men were very much taken in their web, in their net, and were worshiping um, their idol worship, and they were having um, idolatrous relations. So, very bad. And as a result, there was this huge plague, like 24,000 people died in the plague um, as a result of this uh, sexual immorality. And then finally, Pinchas steps up to the plate, um, when something really came to a head where Zimri, the, the head of the tribe of Shimon, um, pretty much had an illicit, immoral relationship with a Midianite woman right in front of Moshe and the entire Jewish people. And everyone's kind of like, you know, freaked out and crying, and but they're not really proactively uh, stopping this act from happening. So... Um, Pinchas gets up and he kills this uh, man, this Jewish man, and this Midianite woman. And as a result of that, play, the plague stops and people stop dying. So 24,000 people died. And it's amazing, actually, that that does correspond to the amount of people who died um, in during Sirat Omar, the students of Rabbi Akiva. But I guess that's a topic for another discussion. I remember reading something about that. But... Um, right now, I'm, I'm talking to you about something that happens after the plague. So when the plague is all over and peace sort of is restored and things return to uh, normal, so to speak, um, there is a census that is um, conducted, meaning the Jewish people are counted. And you might think that it's like, oh, I guess 24,000 people died, so now you want to count them again just to make sure or kind of like... You know, if a shepherd, uh, you know, is counting his sheep and then there's some plague or there's, you know, uh, wolves that take over the, the sheep or, or killing the sheep. So you want to count them to make sure, uh, like, who's left. But Nitivo Shalom talks about this idea. And he says, first of all, um, there, the, the wording used to describe the census, like Hashem says to Moshe, go out and count the Jewish people. So the way he says it is don't count, which is tispor, or timne, but he says, se'u et rosh kol adat b'nei Israel, which could mean, I guess, count the heads of all the Jewish people, but it sounds like it's really saying elevate, se'u is elevate, bring up the heads of all the Jewish people by counting them. So asks Nitivo Shalom, what's up with this? Why do we, we have this counting of the Jewish people after the plague? Why does it say elevate the heads of the Jewish people, the congregation of Israel? Um, and he says like this. There's basically, and why do we do it now? So there is a concept called Kalal Yisrael. And I've mentioned it a few times before on these little videos. So I'm sure you remember. The idea is, is that there is this unit of Kalal Yisrael. It's, it's a concept. It's called the congregation of the Jewish people. It's not like each and every individual, but it's the entire whole. Now, this whole is much more than the sum of its parts. It's not each individual and a bunch of people get together and they equal the Jewish people. No, it's a separate unit. It's called the Jewish people. And that is 
an indestructible, um, completely whole, completely perfect uh, concept, okay? Meaning, every when the Jewish people get together as a unit, and that's why there's this minhag, there's um, a uh, custom to say before you do a mitzvah, l'shem, I'm going to read it out to you, you say, um, l'shem yichud, hold on a second, you say, l'shem yichud, b'shem kol b'nei Yisrael, you say, that you are doing this mitzvah in the name of all of Am Yisrael. And the reason why you do that is because in that concept of Klal Yisrael, ein chet ve'ein pesha. There is no sin. There is no crime in this whole unit of the Jewish people. Why? Because really what happens is, is that only an individual sins. When one individual sins, obviously he did something wrong and he is now no longer perfect, no longer complete, no longer whole, flawed, okay? And in that way, that individual has a very hard time connecting to God because God is perfect and God is infinite. And this person is so finite and so flawed and he sins, so he has a very hard time connecting to Hashem. And really, only the entire Jewish people as a whole can have a relationship with Hashem. As a whole, the Jewish people are called... Um, a batzug, a partner, a spouse of Hashem, a beloved of Hashem. As a whole, we Jewish people are called Bini Bechori Yisrael. My firstborn son is Israel. Because when we're together, each person complements the other. And one person's weaknesses are complemented by another person's strengths, and vice versa. And so all together, only together, we can actually keep the Torah. We are flawless. We are, there is no such thing as sin or as any kind of um, disrepair that we fall into. So when, so, okay, going back to Bilam in last week's Parsha, Bilam, it really bothered him that we had this concept of being an entire congregation of the Jewish people. And that was indestructible. And he could, he kept on like bumping his head against the wall of, oh, the Jewish people are united. Oh, the Jewish people are all together. Matovu ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. There's no getting through this unit of Am Yisrael. It's too strong. It's indestructible. It's too complete. It's too perfect. They're connected to Hashem. <coughs> and there's no breaking that connection. So what he was trying to do with his plan about the Midianite women seducing the Jewish men is create that disconnection by going at the individuals, not cursing the entire Jewish people. You couldn't do that. But let me get at the individuals, and slowly but surely, they will disconnect from the whole, from the unit, and then we'll be able to disconnect them as a group from Hashem. And that's really, unfortunately, what did happen. There was a dent in the in the unit of Klal Yisrael because there was so much sin and so much immorality. And it was like the Jewish people were like being being attacked spiritually and as a result they weren't able to connect to Hashem and once that happens you have a plague you have um, you have a complete uh, deterioration of the Jewish people as a whole so what happens after the plague and that is what Moshe is trying to do or what Hashem is asking Moshe to do is repair uh, the concept of Klal Yisrael. By counting the Jewish people, you are elevating them. Se'u et rosh kol adat b'nei Yisrael. Elevate the Jewish people to the point where they are again counted to become that unit of Klal Yisrael, of a whole, of a perfect entity which cannot be blemished. It cannot be... Um, sinning. It cannot be incomplete. It cannot be disconnected from Hashem. Because Hashem would never disconnect from his son or from his beloved, from his spouse. That is just not a possibility. So after the plague, when we're trying to get back to normal and go back to our connection to Hashem and to repair what happened or rectify the sin that just happened here, uh, there comes a need to count the Jewish people reinstate 
that level of Kalal Yisrael, and therefore it's an elevation. Se'u et Rosh B'nai Yisrael, elevate the Jewish people. And that's just something to keep in mind, is that we as an individual always are going to be flawed. But if we can connect to, to the Kalal Yisrael, if we can connect to the unit as a whole, in whatever way, if we're just connecting to the Jewish people as a whole by saying, you know, I am part of the Jewish people. This is my people. This is my nation. And if we just love Jewish people, if we say to ourselves, I love Jewish people, this is my family. This is my nation. This is a unit that is indestructible. That is extremely beneficial for us as individuals as well, because then we're connected to a whole and we can connect to Hashem. And obviously that's where we get our life for us. That's where we get our uh, purpose in creation. And um, yeah, let's try and work on that. And Shabbat, especially, is a time to work on that. Um, says Nitzvah Shalom. I mean, he's Hasidic, so he has this. They have this thing where they all get together. I guess the Hasidim get together at the end of the day on Shabbat for Sudesh Lishi for Shalashudas, um, the third meal, because he says like Shabbat is that day when the Jewish people are considered Hashem's partner. Knesset Yisrael Yihya Ben Zukha. Right? Shabbat is that day where is that connection, that closeness, that intimacy, that marriage between God and the Jewish people. So there comes again a need to have Jewish people together. So if you have guests for Shabbat, you are fulfilling that idea, right? You're bringing people into your home. You're connecting with other Jewish people. You go out to shul. You do whatever it is you do to connect to the uh, klal of the Jewish people as a whole. Have a good Shabbos.